Hello and welcome again. So we'll start a sequence of videos on the Diffie-Hellman keys change, which is a very important protocol in cryptography. Uh, I'm gonna denote this by DHKE. So my I might use it later. So that's when I whenever you see this, I'm referring to the Diffie-Hellman keys change. Now before we actually go into describing what this actually is, uh, let me give you a little bit of a motivation on on why do we care about a key exchange, which is basically what the Diffie-Hellman is. So the motivation is this. If you remember when we were covering uh, the symmetric ciphers, uh, so this was the setup. So again, aliens involved, they want to communicate. They want to communicate through an insecure channel. Uh, if they agree to on a symmetric cipher, so whatever that symmetric cipher might be, DES, AES, or any of the other symmetric ciphers. One of the characteristics of the symmetric ciphers is that they have the same key for encryption decryption. Now, one of the problems uh, in this setup is uh, this question here. How do Alice and Bob share the secret key? And this is an important uh, uh, fact here because of course they can't send the key through the insecure channel in plain text because it will defeat the purpose of the symmetric cipher. So it's not possible to send the key to the insecure channel. Now you cannot assume either that all is Alice and Bob can meet to share the key somewhere. So that's also not a possibility. Um, of course, if you have your bank and then you want to use a symmetric cipher, which usually what does happens with encryption through online, you can't just go to the bank and get a, and agree on a symmetric key. So this all has to be through the insecure channel. So the problem of the uh, that we have here, how do we agree on a key? That's called the uh, key distribution problem, which is uh, important if we want to use uh, symmetric ciphers, like in this case. So the Diffie-Hillman key exchange solves the problem, solves the problem or on how to share a key through an insecure channel. So that's the Diffie-Hillman key exchange. That's what it does. So the DHKE is an application of the discrete logarithm problem, uh, DLP. Now, this is a, there is a sequence of videos uh, that is before this Diffie-Hillman key exchange. It will be important for you to go ahead and watch those videos before watching this Diffie-Hillman key exchange because all of that that was talked about in there uh, some of the important things in there will be used here, some of the concepts. So so go ahead and review those videos uh, before you actually watch this one. So it will make more sense uh, if you do that. Okay, so what is the key agreement technique? Uh, so this key agreement technique is important because it's also implemented in real life in many protocols. And the protocols, few of them are listed here. The secure shell, SSH, this is the one that you use to communicate to a remote terminal the transport layer security, the TLS, and the protocol security. All of these things are used in the Diffie-Hillman key exchange. And this is actually what your browser uses uh, when it tries to set a key for key, uh, symmetric encryption with some website to encrypt all communication. The first thing that it does is you do the Diffie-Hillman key exchange first. So, so what is the Diffie-Hillman key exchange, the setup? So, there's a couple of things you need to do, um, or at least three things, but the most important things are one and two. The first one is the setup protocol is what we're going to do is we're going to choose a large prime number P. Uh, and it's going to be, I'm going to explain why it has to be a large prime number. Otherwise, the key exchange is, might not be secure. And you're going to choose a generator alpha and CP star. But CP star, remember, is 1 through P minus 1. Now, this is the place we will need to review that part of the discrete logarithm problem because we explain, or, uh, explain exactly what the generator is and what these uh, kind of groups are. And that's an alpha. Now, if you're watching this just to check what is the Diffie-Hillman, just think of alpha as an element from 2 to P minus 2, and it has some special property. So, but to do uh, actually this in detail, you'll have to watch those videos on the discrete logarithm problem. Now, so we um, choose a large um, prime P, a generator alpha of ZP star, and we publish this. So this is like the public key. So everyone will see this. Everyone will see P 
everyone will see alpha. So uh, Eve, which is the attacker in our case, will see B and alpha. That's not a problem. Now, who chooses this uh, P and alpha and who, pu who publishes this? It could be either Alice or Bob, or the parties that are interested in the communication, or a trusted third party, um, whoever that trusted third party is, that properly chooses the public parameters P and alpha. So proper in the sense that we will explain later. So prime P and alpha the generator. So that's the setup process. Just take a prime number, a generator of ZP star. Prime P has to be large. Okay, so now it comes the part where we actually gonna interchange the key. So we're gonna interchange the secret uh, using the fact that we already published P and alpha. And it's very surprising this Diffie-Hillman key exchange is actually not complicated at all. It requires some modular exponentiation, but that's all there is to it. And it solves the problem of key exchange, which is a very important problem. So let me describe here what the Diffie-Hillman key exchange protocol is. So again, as I said before, you have the public parameters P and alpha, which everybody knows about these parameters. So Eve knows about it, these parameters P and alpha. And Alice and Bob want to agree on a key. So the first thing that they're going to do is, let's, let me uh, try down this all over here. So the first thing we're going to do is Alice is going to choose a random number between 2 and P minus 2. So uh, this is going to choose a random number. So you're going to choose, choose a random number A that is a random number that is between 2 and P minus 2 where P here is the prime. Bob is going to do exactly the same thing. So it's going to choose another random number and let's call it that one B, lowercase b, and it's going to be again in that collection from 2 to P minus 2. So both of them are going to choose random numbers in the set from 2 to P minus 2. So this is all done independently. Alice does it and Bob also does it. All right. The next thing that's, that they're going to do is they're going to use uh, the public parameters to do a modular exponentiation. And they're going to do both of them a modular exponentiation. So Alice is going to take uh, alpha, which is uh, public. She knows what alpha is. And she's going to take P and was going to take as a following modular exponentiation. Alpha to the A modular P. So it's going to compute, in this case, uh, alpha to the A, alpha to the A modulo, modulo P. Uh, in a similar manner, Bob is going to do the same. He's going to do uh, exactly the same thing and now with the B that he chose. So now then he's going to do alpha to the B modulo, modulo P. So this is a computation that Alice is doing and also Bob is doing. So of course they are getting different numbers here. So once this is done, let's say these uh, Alice already compute this. Let's call that capital A. And Bob computed this. Let's call that capital B. So capital A and capital B are already computed on uh, the side of Alice and Bob uh, there. So what Alice is going to do now, Alice is going to change, is going to take this A and is going to send it through the insecure channel and Bob is gonna get that A. So that A is gonna be visible to any attacker, but that's okay. So A is gonna be visible, Bob is gonna see it. Now that Bob is gonna send the B that he computed. So he computed B, this using the modular exponentiation, send it to the insecure channel to Alice. So now, they both know A and B. So what, what the protocol now is going to do is, now let's do the uh, part of, of Alice. So Alice here. So Alice is going to take the B here, that is here, and is going to take this exponentiation. She knows her A, of course, right? Because that's, that, that's what he, uh, she chose. Now she's going to do that to the A. So it's going to be B, B to the A, 
and that's again modulo modulo p uh, this is an a here it looks like a nine but it's actually an a let me just write it down again a little bit better so that's an a on the side of bob bob is gonna do a that's the alice and then to the b modulo modulo p and surprisingly enough that number that you see here this number here and this number here are exactly the same number exactly the same so these two numbers get the same are the same thing and this is that one is the key that they're gonna use later for symmetric encryption if necessary so that's it it's not very difficult uh this uh, key is changed it just requires a little bit of computation on both sides they're going to do modular exponentiation you can use the square multiply algorithm to do that and this a and b is okay if the attacker uh knows a knows b if the prime is large enough and alpha is a generator and they are chosen carefully uh, an attacker that knows a and b will have no way of computing the key uh, that is here uh, so far so now so far means that there are no algorithms to compute that efficiently now that doesn't mean that they won't be in the future but for now this is a pretty good key exchange and that's it so the K here is common for both so okay let me show you why Alice and Bob actually get the same number and the proof of this is actually very simple it just requires a little bit of uh, algebra so let me prove for you that Alice and Bob get the same value. So what does Alice compute? Alice computes B to the A modulo P. This is what she computes. That I'm saying that that's the key K. So but what is B to the A? Now what was B? If you go back here, B is alpha to the B modulo P. That's the number that Bob computed. So I'm just going to put it over here. This is alpha to the B and all to the A. That's modulo P that gives me alpha to the A times B if I apply the law of exponents here, which is also true for modular exponentiation. Now, what does Bob do? Bob computes A to the B. And let me scroll up here. This is A to the B modulo, K, modulo P. Now, but what was A? A was the... Uh, number that Alice computed and what was a a was alpha to the a modulo p so if I come back here and I put it over here so it's alpha to the a and then it's up to the b because Bob is doing that exponentiation modulo p I get also by the law of exponents alpha to the a b modulo p so in both cases I'm getting exactly the same number so I'm getting this number is equal to that number there and that's why you get exactly the same key so you get exactly the same key this is a very surprising uh, for me at least the first time I saw it I was very surprised because it's a very simple uh, thing to do and it solves the problem of the key exchange which is a, a big problem uh, if you have to send something through the insecure channel again why uh, if the attacker even by knowing A and B and the public uh, P and alpha then she won't be able to find this public key is just because the log problem is difficult to do. And I'll explain a little bit of the security of this later. But that's what the protocol is. And that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to stop the video now. And in the next video, I'm going to give you an example with small numbers where you, we can actually see what's going on, what kind of uh, numbers we're getting. And even though I did the proof here, then in that computation we'll actually get exactly the same numbers. So I will start the video now and I will see you in the next video.